The Rules Committee will come to order. Uh, this morning, we are taking up SCON Res 5, the Senate Budget Resolution. The House passed a similar resolution earlier this week with identical House reconciliation instructions. Now that the Senate has completed its work, we must sync up these proposals so that both chambers have passed identical measures. Uh, acting today will allow our committee to get to uh, our com will allow our committees to get to work crafting a bold and badly needed proposal that gets COVID relief to the American people. It is my hope that we act without delay so that we can help uh, uh, to those, strug uh, those who are struggling as quickly as possible. Uh, having said that, I would now like to turn to our ranking member, Mr. Cole, uh, for any remarks he would like to make. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Today's hearing is on an emergency item, the Senate budget resolution for fiscal year uh, 2021. This comes on the heels of the House passing its own budget resolution earlier this week. Though I'm gratified to see that there does not appear to be support in the Senate for raising the minimum wage, wage during a pandemic, uh, providing illegal aliens with stimulus checks, uh, shutting off the Keystone pipeline, uh, and banning fracking on federal lands, I remain concerned about where this process is going. Uh, as with the House budget passed on Wednesday, this too is best described as a shell budget, as it is a budget in name only. Instead, uh, it is a procedural mechanism designed to pave the way toward moving a budget reconciliation bill, which will be used for a partisan Democrat-only bill purported to be about COVID-19, but which in reality could be used for any policy they choose. Mr. Chairman, I have some concern, the same concerns about this uh, budget resolution as those I raised earlier this week. Like the House budget, our consideration of this measure comes at a time when the Budget Committee has not yet convened in the 117th Congress. They've taken no testimony, heard from no experts, offered no amendments, and have taken no votes to advance a budget, budget measure. Instead, this measure, like the House measure, is being airdropped into the Rules Committee and from there directly to the floor, hardly what I would call regular order. None of those things happened last year when the fiscal year 2021 budget should have been written and considered by the panel because it's not only uh, it's not uh, well, was not a politically convenient tool for Democrats then. But with Democrats now holding a slim majority in both chambers, the budget is their only means to ram through their partisan priorities. I'm concerned about where the budget uh, process will lead us once it moves into the reconciliation stage. By all accounts, the majority intends to use the reconciliation to advance a partisan Democrat-only COVID-19 package. But of course, this budget does not provide any specific instructions to do so. Instead, it only offers instructions to committees in both the House and the Senate to raise spending by certain amounts. But the majority could use these instructions for almost any item. It need not be on uh, the limited uh, or limited to the COVID-19 relief and could include partisan and controversial measures like Medicare for All or the Green New Deal. We have no way of knowing at this time. But uh, taking my friends and the majority at their word, I'm deeply concerned about their rush into drafting a partisan COVID-19 bill. The majority and President Biden have claimed to, to want to work with Republicans on this matter, but we've seen precious little bipartisanship thus far. We are just two weeks into President Biden's term, and having made no offers to Republicans, the majority is now throwing up its hands and declaring that a partisan bill is the only way forward. But our recent history of the House belies this path. Five times in the last 10 months, Congress has come together to pass into law COVID-19 relief packages totaling nearly $4 trillion. Not all of these funds have yet been spent. Far from it, in fact, and Mr. Smith, the ranking member of the Budget Committee, pointed out as much in his testimony earlier this week. We can certainly do better than this process, Mr. Chairman. I hope uh, in the coming weeks, the majority will come to its senses and make renewed efforts at working with Republicans. Bipartisan negotiations that lead to bipartisan bills may not always be the easy thing, but they are almost always the best thing for the country. I hope my friends will heed that and uh, act accordingly. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the gentleman, and I just would uh, respond by saying that nothing we're doing today uh, prevents there from being a bipartisan bill. And uh, this is about reconciliation. Uh, we we are we are determined to move a COVID relief bill uh, 
uh, through the Congress and uh, get it to the president's desk. And uh, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But if we can't get to an agreement, we need to respond. Uh, and uh, and that's what this is about. And, and look, I'll just also point out for the record that the first meeting with congressional leaders that President Biden had in the Oval Office was with Republicans. And uh, so um, he is uh, he is trying to, uh, to listen and to get ideas. Um, and uh, we will see what happens. I'll just say one final thing. Um, you know, uh, nothing's going to be slipped in uh, to uh, this bill without everybody knowing about it. I, uh, when we move uh, the final package forward, we will be back here in the Rules Committee uh, to advance it to the House floor. So everybody will uh, have a clear understanding of, of what is contained in the bill and what is not. Uh, and again, for what it's worth, I hope it's a big, bold, uh, uh, forward-thinking proposal because people are suffering uh, and they are, they're in desperate need of help, not just in Massachusetts, but all over the country. Uh, and before I uh, yield to uh, Mr. Morelli for a motion, I would like to recognize uh, Dr. Burgess for a unanimous consent request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a unanimous consent request that uh, an article appearing in the Washington Post of February 4th written by Lawrence Summers, <clears throat> um, titled the Biden stimulus is admirably ambitious, but it brings some big risks too. I clearly do not always agree with everything that uh, former Secretary Summers says, but I think there are some interesting points in the article that he put on the post, and I would like it made part of the record. In particular, I would draw attention to the lines that read, the Obama stimulus was about half as large as the output shortfall but the proposed Biden stimulus is three times as large and relative to the size of the gap, it is six times as large. Mr. Cole, end quote, Mr. Cole correctly identified that the budget committee has not met and had hearings on this issue. This is one of the hazards of doing things too quickly and the reason why regular order can be your friend. So I ask unanimous consent to put Secretary Summers article in the record. Without objection. Um, at this time, the chair will entertain a motion from the distinguished gentleman from New York, Mr. Morelli. Ms. Chairman, I move the committee grant a rule that provides for the adoption of SCON Res 5, setting forth a congressional budget for the United States government for fiscal year 2021 and setting forth the appropriate budgetary levels for fiscal years 2022 through 2030. You have heard the motion from the gentleman from New York. Is there any amendment or discussion? Hearing none, um, the vote is on the gentleman's uh, amendment. All those in, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. And the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on that, I would request the yeas and nays. <laughs> the yeas and nays have been requested. The clerk will uh, call the roll. Mr. Hastings. Mrs. Torres. Aye. Mrs. Torres. Aye. Mr. Perlmutter. Aye. Mr. Perlmutter. Aye. Mr. Raskin. Aye. Aye. Ms. Scanlon. Aye. Ms. Scanlon. Aye. Mr. Morelli. Aye. Mr. Morelli. Aye. Mr. Desonier. Aye. Mr. Desonier. Aye. Ms. Ross. Aye. Ms. Ross, aye. Mr. Cole? No. Mr. Cole, no. Mr. Burgess? No. Mr. Burgess, no. Mr. Reschenthaler? No. Mr. Reschenthaler, no. Mrs. Fishbach? No. Mrs. Fishbach, no. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Chairman, aye. Will clerk report the total? Eight yeas, four nays. The ayes have it and the motion is agreed to. Accordingly, Mr. Morelli will handle it uh, for the majority. And uh, Mr. Burgess will handle it for the Republicans, Mr. Chairman. And uh, we're gonna be on the floor around 11.30 or so, just to, so for, for purposes of planning. And I, I hope to God this is the last meeting of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, okay. we, we, we'll offer a motion to that effect. Okay, so without objection, the committee is adjourned.